What is it that brings us, the other Spokane production crew, here to the edge of Peaceful Valley on this beautiful 4th of July evening? But more importantly, what brings all these cops? Well, it's those anarchist kids again. You know the ones, always marching around, holding signs, chanting, demanding things, who a year ago today were protesting against police violence and ended up getting beat up and arrested by the police. It was brilliant, really, I thought at the time, anyway. But then, just a few weeks ago, while looking at one of their MySpace pages, I came across this poster. And I'm thinking, yeah, let's do it again. Only this time we'll be there with our video cameras. The revolution will be televised. Empires fall. Another world's coming. Power to the people. What? In your face, Fuzz. When and where? I'm there, Che. Okay, we meet in Peaceful Valley. Then march to an undisclosed location for a vegan pot. What? Here's my problem with this. Guys, you're taking on the most powerful and violent force in the known universe. You're gonna need a sandwich. Imagine the Vikings without their bloody bear meat, or the Germans without their big sausages. Anyway, we follow this band of young ruffians down into the valley, to where a small group has gathered, and a smaller group is preparing to publicly opine. This girl is explaining how to deal with police. Say please and thank you. Give pedestrians room to walk. Follow the traffic signs. I'm sure I've heard this stuff before, like from my mother. Here's where I expect all of the anarchists to Pummel this cop with eggs before they run off howling into the city streets, leaving the officer to harden into a big croissant in the summer sun. But that's not what happens. And this guy, this Travis guy, I guess you could say he's the brains of the outfit, even though most of them seem uncommonly intelligent. Adopted an act that declared independence from Britain in the name of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for white people. Those who see this holiday for the historical... And you know, what he's saying, the slave owners, the rich white guys, it's factual, but it's not the truth. What he's leaving out is that before 1776, there were only kings and popes telling you what to do. And if you didn't do it, it's red-hot pokers up the rear portal. July 4 was a quantum leap in human dignity. Rebels shouldn't diss rebels. I'm starting to get discouraged. Then, Professor Tom takes the stage. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Requires the formation of the national security state. Right on. And criminal. Yeah, say it loud. The state is likewise the torture state. Uh-huh, amen, brother. ...that defines our humanity is the only thing standing between us and Guantanamo Bay. You, you tell him, preacher. ...from the shantytown surrounding Mexico City to the suburbs of Paris. And still here today in Spokane, Washington. Damn straight. <laughs> okay. That's why they're mad. You know, you guys almost lost me there for a minute, but I'm back on board now. Let's party. Burn this world? Are you sure? 
Have you really thought this thing through? Have you ever seen a world burning? Oh, hear that? We gotta slow down. No, no, speed up. Or slow down. What? What are we supposed to do? Someone tell us what to do. Now here's where I expect an enormous upside-down American flag to unfurl and cover the entire side of the distant Nordstrom's building. But that's not what happens. So, say you did burn it all down and revealed another, what would it be? Don't you think it would be run by the people who burnt it? And wouldn't you still be telling us to slow down, speed up, make room for pedestrians, obey the traffic signs, say please and thank you? And you know what? Eventually, we'd end up with the same thing. Only sootier. Because you just burnt it. See, what you're not seeing here is that it's not any system, capitalism or communism, that's inherently evil. It's us, collectively. It's humanity that is the scourge here. The evil is in us. Aren't parades fun? Here's where I imagine a hundred stones demolishing this Starbucks storefront and the screaming patrons dragged into the streets and hanged from light poles with their Jerry Garcia neckties, kicking and gagging. But that's not what happens. This is my gun. This one's for fighting. This one's for fun. I can see that the other Spokane crew is growing tired of the marching and chanting and are discussing the glories of an ice-cold proletariat beer. But I try to dissuade them, knowing full well that one will lead to two and two to seven and we'll all end up missing the fireworks except for the last nine seconds of the grand finale, which we'll see through the boughs of trees because we can't elbow our way to a decent place. And we've come this far. Shock and awe, we blast into crowded Riverfront Park. And we're not exactly greeted as conquering heroes. Eventually, we arrive at our designated picnic area. When I passed the river for the mall, they were all just looking in distant. There was really loud music going on. And here's where I expect a half dozen young anarchists to douse themselves with gasoline and set themselves ablaze as the others chant, Eat the rich, and end the war, and burn the corporate state. But that's not what happens. Look, this guy again. I, I don't get it. He loves the camera. The camera loves him. He's fairly articulate. He probably has an IQ of 140 or more. He's an excellent propagandist. He's egotistical, and he doesn't mind breaking a few minor laws to get what he wants. I, I want to grab him and shake him and say, Dude, you could be President of the United States. Just then, one of the tiniest of the anarchists walks up and tells James that he should put out his cigarette because there's a law against smoking in the park. And that's when it hits me. This previously wild band of teenagers went out of their way to obtain permission to march through our streets. They didn't break or spray paint anything. They gave their fellow citizens plenty of room on the sidewalk, and they didn't smoke in the park. You anarchists, you kids, don't, don't you see what's happened? You've joined us. You've become us. Welcome to hell. I agree to go to Mootsie's for a couple of drinks. And, oddly enough, the first person we run into is Hippie John, an actual lifelong anarchist. You kids in the park, look. What happened? This could have been your future. What happened? So, what did I learn from the Spokane anarchists? Well, after a few drinks, we go over to the sukiyaki and eat a ton of sushi and drink about nine jugs of sake. 
In honor of our new fellow citizens, we order some kind of a vegetarian dish. And here's where I expect our server to bring us something totally creepy and foreign, something naked lunch kind of scary. And this time, that's exactly what happens. I think it's... I thought it was just... It's not... Yeah, it's not live stuff. Still, every one of us works up the nerve to eat at least one big bite. And you know what? It tastes like... It was good!